Welcome back, and, and this is quite fascinating to me. Um, at the moment we're showing two millivolts on this circuit here, and it's one of those simple scavenger types. You know, the ones with a couple of diodes and a couple of capacitors. With just this little antenna out the side of it. And the thing I noticed was, if I just hold the little antenna, we end up with 52 millivolts there. And I wondered if I could use such a little system with the efficient oscillator that I showed quite recently that uses JFATs. And that's kind of the idea of this video. Let's see what we can do with this sort of thing and hopefully get the thing to run off just an antenna or a ground, get that LED to come on. Okay, for the next part of this, I've got hold of this little wire now. I've disconnected the meter and instead I'm going to connect the negative to the negative of this circuit and let's see if we can get that LED to flash. There we go, it just flashed. And as you can see, I wasn't even holding on to anything. It's like you can build up the charge by holding it. And then it's stored, of course, just in the pair of 1UF capacitors and the pair of 224 little yellow capacitors there. So release off. And then touch. Now the next thing I've done is to replace my hand with this red wire that runs outside to the ground. It goes to a piece of about, about six inches is all of copper. It just goes into the ground outside. Goes through the window and into the ground. Now do we get anything from that? Let's see. Yes we do. We get a flash. So how absolutely cool. I'll try it again. I don't know how many seconds I've got to leave it. There we go. Another flash. So we're at least getting flashes of the LED. Now on here, what I do have is the computer. I've got the audio interface and I've got the speakers and I've got the monitor. Maybe that's doing something as well. But the thing is, without holding on to this little wire or connecting it to the ground outside, I'm only showing 2 millivolts. So it wouldn't appear to be that. Anyway, let's touch it again. There we are, nice bright flash. I'll just check what the millivolts are. So here we are with the leads now connected to the multimeter. 102 millivolts. And that's why we were getting the flashes on the LED because this thing will run down to about, I don't know what it is, 17, 20, something like that, millivolts. And I've got this pot turned all the way around. I'll be showing the circuit diagrams at the end anyway. And, uh, then you'll be able to do this yourself. But yeah, a constant, there we are, 101 millivolts. Let's see how quickly it can recharge again. Um, right, if I short circuit out, right, there we go, and release. That's pretty rapid. Back up to 105 there. So, although these are tiny components, you know, it's showing that there is. Oh, we've got 200 now. There is some build-up going on, and hence the flash on this very efficient circuit. So the next thing I've done is to swap the 82 picofarad little capacitor, ceramic capacitor, with an 0.22 UF, which is a 224. And let's change the running somewhat. Now, it is a bit dark in here, that's on purpose to see this LED. But if I connect up, there we go, we get the single flash, but then a bunch more flashing goes on. So, that's a step forward in my opinion. So next, what's all this mess on here? Well, what I've been doing is testing various other JFETs. MPF-102, 2N7000, and I found out that the 2N7000s don't work as well as the MPF-102, which is slightly less than the K117s. So that's the, uh, the tiered list, as it were, of operating that I've found out. The K117s just slightly better than the MPF 102s. And over here, lots of changes in the capacitors, both electrolytic and ceramic. And I found out that the 1UF electrolytics and the 224s, 0.22 UF ceramics, have working out sort of the best uh, all around. Smaller capacitors ends up with, well, just the LED blinking faster as it runs out of energy. Larger, they take longer to charge up, they get slightly brighter light. 
So midway, really, is how I've gone for this section so far. I should also clean that breadboard. I also do want to take a look at this ground and check on it. Um, it's all faded, it should be red wire of course. And I'll basically clean... Oh my, look! <laughs> There's nothing on the end! Um, that's left me rather confused. There's nothing on the end. So how? How is it developing enough to make that LED flash? Well that is absolutely strange. I mean I will make it into a ground or stick it back in um, with some copper but, but that it might ruin it, the effect, I don't know. You can tell I'm stuttering my words now. That is completely unexpected. So to use an old top gear line on that bombshell back to the studio. So just to confirm everything and perhaps check that I don't know, it didn't come off overnight or something. I've connected the wire back up, which is now not a ground, to the circuit. And we'll check that, <laughs> that this does still flash. There we go. It did just flash. This has got two MPF 102s on it. And um, while they are less efficient, I've only got two and not three, uh, it does still work to flash. The K 7000s, sorry, the 2N7000s um, just about flash them, I mean, you know, nothing like the K117 where we were seeing the multiple flashes when connected. But again, this should show a flash when I connect. Yeah. Man, that's, that's weird. Anyway, onto the circuit diagrams. First of all, the energy scavenger circuit, which is quite old but very popular. And I've used 224 ceramics and 1UF capacitors. The diodes are simply 1N4148s. And then onto my millivolt LED circuit, which started life about 10 years ago, and a friend asked me to make a couple more. So I did, and this is continuation of that research. So there we are, the only change really to a previous showing of this is the 0.22UF capacitor across the 5.6 mega ohm resistor.